Welcome to the Screen Rot Podcast, the podcast where we discuss the weirdest and worst content that's been rotting our screens and indeed our minds. I'm here as ever with Jake Farrell. And with a new member of the Screen Rot team, <laughs> well, yeah. knocking about under it. Um, Mango people, the cat. Mango the Mango cat. Mango the cat, ladies and gentlemen. Anything to say, Mango? No. Um, and <laughs> Basically, me and my mental missus, after struggling with looking after two children and both working, for um, the most fun way to pour some petrol on this fire <laughs> of a life is to get a kitten, Bengal kitten. Um, and she's just she's beautiful rummaging cat. around, trying to eat everything, trying to bite the wires. I mean, as another... Oh, she's going in the right... In side. 10 years' time, you'll be able to smell things from Instagram and YouTube. That'll be like the new thing. And, and if that was the case, halfway through this recording, you'd be able to smell... Uh, cat flesh burning <laughs> where she's bitten through one of the wires <laughs> and we're still trying to talk about some social I, yeah, media lunacy exactly. while she does. Didn't think it was hard enough kind of the possibility of being sued for libel every week. Now also want some animal rights activists on our case for having to go at Mango. Yes, well you mentioned sued for libel. Oh um, God. <laughs> should we get into this? I've, 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 had, I've, had a, I've had a tumultuous couple of weeks in terms of... Eh, by the way, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for tuning in, as you always do. Yep. Um, nice comments on previous episodes. All, all very much appreciated. Now, into what's going on with me. A couple of weeks ago... Well, a few weeks ago, uh, as we said on another episode, I went on another podcast, The Mike and Vittorio Guides Parenting, Told a long story about Conor McGregor that someone told me was true. Um, now McGregor's offering out the other hosts of that podcast. <laughs> uh, around a similar time, I was on the Always Be Comedy podcast, a podcast um, run by the organisers of a gig in South London called Always Be oh, Comedy. Man, oh, what's she doing now? She's biting you. She's having a go at me. <laughs> Benga out. Come here. Come on, Mango. Um, trying to tell a story about Bobby Davro here. Well, this is it. So I was on, I was on their podcast and yeah. you have to sort of... What you have to do on their podcast, you have to curate like your dream comedy gig. Right. Now, everyone who goes on there is like, oh, well, I'd have Richard Pryor because he's <laughs> you know, such, a, such a great... I'd have um, Mr. Lenny Bruce on yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Some people go, you know, I just think Stuart Lee's so clever. And it's, it's like, the, a more fun way of doing it is to pick a funny lineup. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, I, so I had Bobby Davro closing and I told an anecdote, which is true. Which I think you've told on here, or half of on here. Potentially, yeah. yeah about how I, I did a gig with Bobby Davro years ago. He was like booked to do 20 minutes at the end. He did two hours, songs. The works. The works, you know, and then he ended up leaving with, um, there was a Hindu front row and he left with the mother of the bride, Bunch. arm in arm. I don't want to imply anything. The reason I don't want to imply anything, right, Bobby's got grown up children now. Yes. One of them found a clip of this on YouTube, right. showed it to him. Now, at some point when I was recording this podcast and I was talking about Bobby Davro, I must have described his act as the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Right. Right. Now in a this is the thing. Like in a way that a car crash is the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Well yeah we've got to be careful because I don't know how much he listens to now but this is the thing. I'm kind of joking. I'm kind of taking the mick. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not saying he's bad but I'm just saying it was mental. It was yes. the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. I obviously don't remember saying that phrase. <laughs> I, I didn't actually log in my brain the most amazing thing I've ever seen is Bobby Davro. <laughs> right? I get a phone call from an unknown <laughs> Bobby number. Davro birth of your two kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. So I get a phone call Saturday afternoon. I'm getting kids dinner ready, trying to get out the door, go work. Um, I get a phone call, uh, unknown number. Now, I'm waiting for a plumber to come and fix my washing machine. <laughs> so I, I think it's a plumber. Sort of estuary accent. Fuck off, Mango. Get out of the water. Estuary accent. Uh, is this Jacob Hawley? Yes. First question. Doesn't it doesn't say who it is. First question. What's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? Oh, no. That's how he opened. I said, pardon? What's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? Who's this? Oh, I'm like, just come and fix the washing machine. <laughs> You said the most amazing thing you've ever seen is Bobby Davro's comedy act. I reply, who's this? It's Bobby Davro. <laughs> He's got my phone number. Who gave you his, who gave him, him well, your number? Well, I'll tell you off mic who did it. He's okay. a comedy promoter who uh, runs gigs in okay. East London and is a bit of an idiot. Oh, right. Dave Ward. Um, <laughs> I just, that, uh, this is the comedy world being set alight because Bobby Davro's ringing around everyone he knows going have you got Jacob Hawley's number yeah and yeah go, yeah, yeah. yeah Bobby Davro's trying to get hold of Jacob <laughs> and it, it you know it, it, uh, at this point when he says it's Bobby Davro I'm like oh god like he's gonna know I was taking the mic he's gonna be upset yeah he he he, he takes it 
as well as possible. As well as it's possible he, to he take it. He basically thinks I'm his biggest fan. Mm. And he's like, it's so kind what you said about me. And bless his heart, he's had a rough year. He lost his partner last year. Sorry he, had, to hear he, that. Had a, he had a stroke start of this year. Sorry to hear that. He's had well. a really tough time. <laughs> Um, he's really keen for work. That's one thing I should say. If there's any comedy bookers watching this, he used to, he was telling me he used to do a lot of butlins. Mm-hmm. Um, butlins won't book him because after the stroke, he's he's apparently there's an insurance risk. <laughs> so he's keen. Anyway, so what we'd like to announce is this will be my last episode yeah, yeah. of the podcast. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for everything. I've really enjoyed it. 29 episodes, taking it from here. And joining us today, Mr. Bobby Davro, everybody. <laughs> Give him a hand getting in. Move, man, go set him off. He, I just wanted to say one one mm. thing. It was so funny. So he, he was, by the way, this is off the back of me doing a podcast where I told a story about him doing two hours on stage rather than 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. I'm rushing to get out the door. He's on the phone for 45 minutes. Mm. I can't, I can't end the call. No. And he's still giving me advice. Yeah. He's handed down advice that he's got from like Bob Monkhouse and people like that. And it, and he's at one point he's going, you know, I sort of do more variety than stand up. And I'm going, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> and he, go, he goes, sometimes I think it's nice if you can do something that kind of touches the audience. It's emotional, that, g- that gives them right. something they can feel rather than just laugh at. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going, uh-huh. And he goes, I like to talk about my daughter on stage. You got a daughter, Jacob? I go, yeah, I got a daughter. He goes, Famously, oh. he went shut up about her. Well, <laughs> well, right. He goes, how old's your daughter? I say three. He goes, the loveliest thing about daughters is they're so affectionate with their dads when they're young, aren't they, Jacob? And I'm going, uh-huh. <laughs> and he goes, and the sad thing is they grow up and you'll have one moment where she kisses you for the last time and you'll never know that that's going to be the last time. And if you did, you'd cherish it, but you don't know. <laughs> and I'm on the phone going, uh-huh. He goes when I, when I was when I was younger I worked so much but by the time my daughter was a teenager we you know it was a bit distant between the two of us I'm going yeah he goes she went to uni she went travelling after uni we didn't really talk for a few years I'm going uh huh uh huh and he goes I saw her after she'd been travelling we met up out of habit I kiss her on the cheek she turns her face I kiss her cheek and she starts rubbing her cheek and I say don't rub it off darling it's a kiss from your daddy. <laughs> And apparently she says to him, she goes, I wasn't rubbing it off, Dad. I was rubbing it in because I've missed you. <laughs> oh, my and just, God. Just listen to this. He goes to me, he goes, now, Jacob, if you've got any stories like that, you, you should tell them on stage because it, it really touches people and they really like it. I'm going, yeah. And, in, and then, this is incredible, he goes, and if you haven't got any stories like that, just make it up. <laughs> and he goes, I made that one up. No. <laughs> Swear on my life, oh my I, I just made that one up, and I, I'm, I'm just like, you, you're just doing your tricks on me now. Your are you? life, man, your <laughs> you, fucking you've t- life. You've turned this phone call into Mango. Get off my headphones. Get off, Mango. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna have to get her out. Your fucking lived experience, man. It's her mate. I've got McGregor going after people I do podcasts with. I've got Bobby Davro phoning me on a Saturday afternoon when I'm trying to feed my children. Sunday, I tell you, made about up Easter. stories about his daughter. Sunday, I'll put a reel up about bloody Easter. On yeah. Easter Sunday, I get some idiot messaging me or commenting, being like, I'll, I'll be down a pub near your house soon. You could come and, you know, if you want to slag off Jesus on Easter Sunday. Yeah, me and Meg, I'll be down there in 10 minutes and Bobby Devil's well, coming at all. Like, I've told you already, but I, I, I got drunk and started pretending I'm a traveller to scare him off and called him all day. It, look, I'm stressed. Yeah, you're and the stressed. And the one thing that's you're making stressed. it better, the one thing that's keeping the five hairs on my forehead is dense. Is dense. The hair, hair, <laughs> The finasteride and minoxidil. You can you can now use Bobby yeah. Davro thirty at checkout. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Jacob thirty at checkout. You get thirty percent off. I don't get a penny. I just wanted to help the writers keep their hair on their heads. Anything else we need to talk about, Jake? I'm back on tour soon. Um, Northampton at the end of April. If you want to come to that, plenty more dates around the UK. We're doing a live show of the Screen Rock podcast. Um, we're going to be doing that. Um, we're going to be bringing a fucking cat with us because she's like, shut coming. up. Um, we're going to be doing that in August. We'll be releasing um, all the details of that soon. Yeah, yeah. Ticket details soon. It's going to be a bit of a 50th episode spectacular. We've moved it back slightly. We're going to do it uh, like the kind of July time. We moved it back yeah. slightly. It's going to be episode 50. We've got a great guest, beginning of August. It's uh, basically all firmed up now. I've just got to email. Is it? I've just got to email someone back. Uh, no, sorry, that I'm waiting for them to confirm with me, but they, they said it's all good. Details yeah. soon. Mango um, will be there. So that'll be out. Live live episode soon. Um, and this week, this, this week we're talking about someone who... Um, 
the timing is right. Yes. Like uh, they're th- hot. This this guy. Well, yeah, they they've been hot for a while. They've been hot for a been, good yeah, long yeah. time. Actually, um, we've got to start this. Episode, we've got to break the cameras because Mango's driving him fucking mental. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a cat on a hot tin roof. This fucking kitten's chasing him around. As if it wasn't chase. stressful enough doing this podcast, I have to worry about accidentally murdering a cat. We usually Lua coming to... <laughs> home. Hello, Jake. Did you do the podcast? Yeah, darling, I did. But I got some bad news, by the way. <laughs> Do you remember Mango? Do you remember beautiful Mango? <laughs> I dropped a mug on his head. <laughs> We've got to get this cat out of here. This week, we, t- we talk about a man who's, who's just run the length of Africa. For yeah. some reason, everyone bloody hates him. <laughs> <laughs> it's Russ, the hardest geezer. Bush. Oi, get on this. Please. The Hardest Geezer has just completed uh, one of the most notorious and remarkable acts of charity (laughs) that has been completed in the last few years. And no one likes him. (laughs) (laughs) And we need to work out why that is. So The Hardest Geezer, for anyone who hasn't seen this guy... Um, young ginger guy. I think he's from Worthing. He's from Worthing in Surrey. Yeah, that's it. Right, but but again, similar to some of the ones we've done recently, just a south east of England. Yeah, suburban. I, I I really don't like using the word geezer, but he wants us to. <laughs> I mean, he's famously called. Cool. And so yeah, his name's Russ Cook. Russ his, Cook. His, his name is from Worthing ba- in Surrey. Yeah, and he basically started this thing. A year ago now. Yeah, maybe uh, even more. Maybe longer. I think, I think, I think he's been it's out just ages. under right, a year. Okay. It's just under a year where he set himself the challenge of running the length of Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, he's filmed himself and documented it and he's he's got a van full of videographers and people <laughs> documenting. It's absolutely mad. The it's, it's mad. Um, and people don't like him. Yeah. What, but where do you think that's come from? Why do you think that is? Well, I've got I some mean, theories. We've got 45 minutes to get into it. We have got 45 minutes to get into it. The first thing I want to throw at you, mm-hmm. he's a ginger guy. Yes. Now, you're a ginger guy. I am a ginger you guy. You grew up a ginger guy. I did, famously, yeah. Do you think that's it? Do you, like... And it, you're, you're not that ginger, do you, do you know what I mean? I, I yeah. like okay. This this maybe speaks to my prejudices. I don't think of you as ginger. Do you know what I mean? I would be mates with you if I did. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but I've, I've got people in my life. Where I'm like he's ginger. Proper ginger. Right? She's ginger. Right, right, right. You're not really that ginger. You're you're. I'd say your hair colour's closer to a sort of brown strawberry blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a rust. You could and, call and, it a and, rust. But you, you you also you're not as freckly as like like this guy is orange. Rust, do you know what I mean? Rust the, the, is the, ginger. The, this guy is fucking Garfield. Yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. The, This this guy's really ginger. God. And I I do wonder <laughs> I do wonder if people have a bit of a issue with. A guy that ginger calling himself the hardest geezer. <laughs> and, and I think that's kind of the joke. Well, uh, yeah, I think the names definitely rings a bell. And I think it's good you brought this up because, I mean, without doubt, the most prevalent and horrendous bigotry in our society today is against gingers. That's that's not even close. That used, right. So that, that used to... I actually do think that used to be true. Like, like in the 90s... When? In the 90s, if you... If I think you, the black British community might have something to say but, No, yeah, it. yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, this is maybe speaking a bit more about my school experience. Right, so, okay. Uh, my, my school experience... <laughs> my school experience... The gingers went through hell. Right. The gingers had a rough old time mm. of it. Boys, girls, doesn't matter. They had a yeah, rough yeah, old time yeah. of it. And, you know... <laughs> and rightly so. I don't think... The school deserves a pat on the back for this necessarily, but mm. they were getting a worse time than the ethnic minorities. I will okay, say that. Good news. Thankfully. <laughs> My mate Chris Tan, who I spoke about previously yeah. with the Malaysian dad. Gabby Tan. He, 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 you know, I, I, know, I wouldn't want to speak to this, but I, I don't remember Chris... Uh, receiving any abuse whereas uh my mate jonathan purdy <laughs> aka ginger john got plenty yeah plenty of patrick o'shaughnessy he's, sti- he's still ginger john yeah he's still gj <laughs> gj and he uh, you would classify him as i mean i've met purdy lovely bloke yeah, Pro- proper ginger i think he he well i think it fades as you get older does a little he bit. he was he was i mean the thing is he was skinny as a rake mm-hmm. and he had glasses yeah. so he it was like ding 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 and actually he did incredible work because he didn't get bullied at all he was fairly popular but he was he was ginger he was, yeah he was ginger 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 and, and it, you know he'd get some ginger jokes right it, is that 
I think we do need to spend the sort of next half an hour <laughs> trying to work out why people dislike Russ. <laughs> dislike Russ doing this incredible charitable act. I, well, uh, so with you, you've put your finger on something with my... Is, he gin- is it because he's ginger, do you think? I think part of it is because he's ginger. And I definitely didn't experience the full ginger abuse experience when I was at school. Because, do you think because you weren't that ginger? Because I was halfway there, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know when they say, when you're if you get attacked by a lion... Mm. In the jungle, you don't have to outrun the lion. You just have to outrun the slowest person in the group. That's the. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right. And like right. that was my experience. There was someone school. more ginger. There was than a you. couple of people more ginger than me. <laughs> I went to school in. I went to an Irish Catholic school. John uh, yeah, and you can better believe there were some gingers there. There was some. There was some. Uh, so many, many Irish descendants there with with who were more ginger than me. And, but I did get ginger abuse. And do you want to know? Do you want to know what mm. I? I bottled it. I dyed my hair blonde. It was the David Beckham era, you know, when he had the, the highlight. Did you really? I went full highlight. My mum my, my used to do it at home with the with the cap. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, for, I think, 13, 14, 15, those regions, I was, I was peroxide do blonde. You know, that, that's incredible. My, I... I... I wasn't ginger, but I did exactly the same did thing. Did you? Yeah, my my mum would do the cap. Yeah. It, I was a bit younger. I think I was about 11 or 12. I, I've got pictures of me on holiday at a caravan park. Like, like fucking my dad's England shirt. Right, so I'm right, wearing right. like a dress. And I, I had the Mohican. Nice. I did, the, I did the, the highlights using the cap. And then at one point, I just had the fringe blonde. <laughs> I don't know if any celebrity had That's... that or whether that was my mum getting creative after two bottles of wine one night. <laughs> Jake, come over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the cap had broken. David so... Beckham was the most kind of, I think, prevalent like fashion force of our... Oh, mate, yeah. He yeah. was the one. And I right. think because he was a footballer, we, you felt you could do it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, metrosexuality was a thing back then. We're getting, yeah. we're getting off topic now. But <laughs> we're but, but, way but off topic. Early, early noughties, <clears throat> metrosexuality, Jude Law, that, that kind of... Yeah, it was a good time. Um, and I think Russ is experiencing a bit of anti-ginger prejudice because, uh, and it's the name, because he's doing a charitable thing. He's doing an incredible thing. He's doing the kind of thing that when we were growing up, it would be Comic Relief would do this, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, Or like yeah, Eddie Izzard yeah. would do it. And, it. and instead of being broadcast on YouTube, like every two days with some weird edit, it would be on the BBC at nine o'clock on a Friday night yeah. with like a full camera crew going around. It's kind what, of really morphed, this, doesn't it? This is this is the other interesting thing. It's so he he's sort of doing it via socials and YouTube yeah. and and I don't doubt he does have PR people on board, people whose job it is to try and get him help him get reach yeah. and help him get as much um as, as much notoriety and, and get as many eyeballs on him as possible. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what I'm trying to say is there will be people whose job it is to try and get him on the one show. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't think he's going to get on the one show. Do you not reckon? No, I don't think it. And I, I haven't seen... Like, what should be happening is Good Morning Britain should be Zooming him. I think they are. I don't think that's happened much. I think I've seen a couple of like outtakes of him doing there's BBC been, there's Breakfast There's been a little film. bit, but I, I, I do think that by and large, the mainstream has kind of rejected him. And it's... I guess if there's a theory that I'm trying to propose with this episode, it's that if you're annoying enough... It doesn't matter if you're running a continent for charity. People aren't interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, so I, I think there's a few... Th- I, I think Or people are interested, but they're interested in being like this fucking... Prick. But, it, they're, but they're, I, I just see so much on Twitter of people being like, oh, this guy again. Fuck but off. He's oh, this a- <laughs> there's also a lot of people who think it's bollocks. Because there's, it, there's been times where he's disappeared for three days and said it's because a tribe took him. And I do, I do think that might be true. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't think it's bollocks. But there are a lot of people on Twitter who are like, "This is definitely absolute rubbish." And he replies to them. Yeah. I mean, God knows how he has the time. He's running like sixty kilometers a day, and then replying to five hundred tweets. I, calling I, him a liar. I, I, I will go on record. I think, I think he's, I think this is all real. I think it's legit. Yeah, I, I think it's legit. And, and I, I can see why. I mean, it, it is really one of those things with the internet. Like, no good deed goes unpunished, does it? <laughs> Yeah. Like you could be, there is no, can you think of something you could do where you would still not get some bloke commenting being like, you're not fucking doing that. No, no. Yeah. (laughs) It it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it's actually really funny. Jim, we did an episode a few weeks ago on Davis Clark. Yeah. You know, know, the the American kind of like crazy dead behind the eyes. Kind of like, I'm dialed (laughs) in everybody. I'm about to have a good meeting. And and you pointed out that one of the first comments in one of his videos was someone being like, have you ever done anything? (laughs) 
<laughs> and it's British. I guarantee you that was a British yeah, person's yeah, yeah. dinner. It's such a British thing that it doesn't matter. I think it's as soon as you try and position yourself as kind of like worthy, mm. someone will cut you down. Someone will get... If you tomorrow was like, hello, I'm Jacob Orley, and I'm going to go around every children's hospice in the UK delivering presents for yeah. the rest of the year, someone would be like, you're not fucking doing that. That's yeah, not it was, so someone would call me a cunt. <laughs> Bobby so Davro would be ringing you up again. Someone would say, you're not funny. <laughs> Bobby would just come for the drive. Bobby, Bobby needs. He keeps asking. Channel me. Four, if you're watching, Jacob Hawley and Bobby Davro delivering presents to children's hospitals. Who says no? I hadn't actually thought of that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> to stroke victims. Me and Bobby Davro. <laughs> me and Bobby running the length of Africa. I'm fucking. I'm fucking eating tarmac. <laughs> the tribes are trying to cut his head off because he's done a seventies joke. <laughs> oh god. No. So so so. Um, Sadly, Bobby succumbed to dengue fever two days ago. <laughs> One day into the mission. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> you barely got out of the. They've port. taken to him. Bobby's doing panto in the Congo. Bobby. Bobby's. He's doing, he's doing multi role play. He's doing all the characters at once. Bobby's doing widow twanky and buttons and Peter Pan. <laughs> in Brazzaville, in the Brazzaville Arts Centre. <laughs> um, let's watch a clip of Rush. Let, let's, yeah. let's, so what, what we're going to do, we're actually going to watch two clips now. We're going to watch <clears throat> the clip that he released to kind of announce this this expedition, this, this journey he's going on, yep. running the length of Africa for charity. We're going to watch that and then we're going to sort of go, it's kind of like a, how it started, how it going. <laughs> yeah, how it started. This is the first one. When you're growing up, you're told what you can expect is this. Go this get is a very kind of well-made manicured That's clip. Try not to Drone shots. Up, if you did fuck it up, Russ is no looking be surprised. And then like the say, hardest geezer. He's got I'm tats all over him. I'm going to be the first person to run the length of Africa. And the first thing your mate says is, how the fuck are you going to do that? Yeah. You're ginger. <laughs> you haven't got much in the Reference pocket. Reference to the ginger. safari vehicle is more of a school bus. This is Russ. He's got a kind of odd Part smile, I will say that. A slightly scary smile. Online, the unlikely amateur, hugely talented, but with no formal training. I feel like, the, the, I feel like so much of the smile the in the band is so forced. It's very forced. I think that's he why people don't like them. to run the length of Africa. He will face jungles, deserts, war zone, and wildlife. From a complicated childhood, with mental health a challenge mental Russ health. is going to run for his life <laughs> I, I'm sorry I'm sure he's had a different time but a complicated childhood that's such a funny way of putting it <laughs> yeah. how was your childhood it was complicated anyway that's how it started so that's a perfectly manicured well made kind of promo video effectively yep. it's like a wrestling video almost beard trimmed beard trimmed fresh fade, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. he's got drone shots of him running in this beautiful sunlight this is 300 days later Day. <laughs> I'm He's got goggles on, if you, you're not watching. It's beard's fucked. on a sandstorm this morning, sucking oxygen, chewing sound for breakfast. They're trying to get me gone, but they just can't. I'm too damn ferocious, boys and girls. He looks fucking mental. Ago. See you in Tunisia. So for anyone not watching there... <laughs> He's got he's got swimming goggles on to stop the sand going in his eyes. Yeah. His his hair's kind of long and fucked, and he's he's bless him. He, he needs to use Jacob Thirty at the checkout. <laughs> and, and, and fair play, he's had a stressful year. He's had a, yeah, um, he's, and he's not got Mango the cat to deal he with. He hasn't got Mango the cat trying to eat his microphone wire. He's he's got his beard tied up, sort of almost almost with like a hair clip or something. Yeah. He's got, like he, he's he's in a mess. Yeah, he's uh, but he's done it. He, like what you have to say, you have to say fair enough. Anyone doubting the legitimacy of his of, of his claims that he's run the length of Africa? Yeah. He does look like he's run the length of Africa. <laughs> he looks fucked. Yeah, he does. And he is, like you say, he's doing like 75 kilometres a day. Yeah. That is mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you, do you remember um, Eddie Izzard? Or, or she's called... Yeah, they were called Eddie, God, Eddie Izzard every, then. Every episode we get into this. <laughs> I'm obsessed with I these think people. I think we can refer no, to I, them as at the time they were called Ed. No, I think they're still called Ezzy. Oh my god! I, I don't think I don't think they're that bothered. Um, <laughs> right? Okay. Eddie Izzard went. Oh, it's not even relevant. Why have we brought it up? Eddie Izzard ran marathons every single day yeah, yeah. for ages, yeah, and, yeah. and then now they're doing Shakespeare. <laughs> Maybe Russia do Shakespeare. I don't know. What I'm going with. <laughs> Again. Just, Alas, <laughs> poor Yorick. Yeah. I knew him well. <laughs> god. They're but, busy actually, aren't they? Who? Eddie Izzard. Just say Izzard. <laughs> Let's go with Izzard. Izzard. <laughs> Izzard's, Izzard's busy, aren't they? 
man. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to back the hardest geezers. So, somehow we're in safer territory talking about the fucking hardest geezer running the length of Africa. Can I confess something about hardest geezer? Mm. So I started watching the videos on YouTube about f- three or four months ago. Oh, did you actually watch the YouTube? So <clears throat> you I watched, watched the, the full YouTube's. length. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. They do it to about twenty minutes, and at the start, Emma would come in and be like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is pathetic." And she would constantly, she was obsessed by how dirty they were, because they are dirty. So when you mean they, they're dirty, he's dirty and his mates are dirty. Him and all of his dirty mates are in well, the... Well, they're in Africa, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 they're living out of a van, it's tough, yeah. But she, um, but she thought they were disgusting, basically. She thought they were gross little uni boys, and a lot of the banter... Oh, they are so uni, a lot she's of, so right. A lot of the banter is like, oh, I just done a fart and stuff like that, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. whatever. And it, like a lot of his shtick, and this is the thing... It's a poison chalice because the, the reason that he's got eyeballs on him is because he's this weird, larger-than-life character where he's like, I'm just too ferocious. I'm chewing up the tarmac. And that's the reason why people hate him. So it's mm. like, if he was normal, no one would know who he is. And if he was normal, people wouldn't hate him. So it's kind of a bit of a back and forth. Yes. Emma's now, she's fully convinced. She's giving money to the, to the charity. Appeal. No way. She loves him. She 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 really? can't she can't wait for him to finish. We're both deeply invested in Russ Cook finishing this thing. That's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like really gone from. She was like, I, I hated them. I thought they were so lame. And she's like, those those boys have really grown on me. <laughs> <laughs> so you've touched upon something there. He is so uni. Very uni. He is so so. In the UK, you can either go to a Redbridge University. Red brick, yeah. Red brick. That's, that's how fucking close I was to getting into one of those. Same thing. A red, red bridge. What does that mean? You can, you can either go to a red brick university, yeah. which is like top twenty old institutions. There's a lot of people from private school there, yeah. <clears throat> and and I think at that point you have to kind of go, yeah, I've 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 ascended. I, I'm 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 doing something my family wouldn't expect. Yeah, right? yeah. You, you went to one of those, didn't you? Yeah. Let me tell you, it's changed my. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I think I think you go there and you're surrounded by people who either went to schools like ours and did incredibly well, yep. or went to mainly school. private school. Yeah. yeah, 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 and 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 you kind of you kind of step it up a bit, then yeah, behaviour wise. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was no, I was the best boy at my school anyway. Right, I, okay. I stepped my behaviour down a bit, if anything. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, the point I'm trying to make is. Outside of the top 20 universities in the country, there's basically 150 <laughs> fucking creches, right? And I say that as someone who went to Middlesex University, the 114th best <laughs> yeah, university so in the right. country. Where's the bell? And Where's the bell? Oh, shit. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> I can feel one coming. All right, here we go. Basically, okay, here we go. So every university that isn't a red brick yes. is basically a fucking college. Thank you. <laughs> it is. And I say that as someone who went to uni in one of these. Yeah. I, I ended up, after I um, finished university, like when I was sort of part-time, doing part-time work while I was sort of like starting to make a living as a comedian, I worked at my old uni. Mm-hmm. I worked at Middlesex. Yeah. And it, this was like a few years after I graduated. And it's more so the case now. They're just fucking colleges. They're just places for guys like this. Yes, right, and who dirty who, mates. Who shouldn't actually be going to university. Right. He should have a trade. I should have a trade. <laughs> the reason this country's fucked is because idiots like me and Russ Cook, right? We, we, have got we, dreams we, instead we, of trades. Exactly. <laughs> we've got too much steam blown up our asses because we were in set one for maths when we were fucking nine years old. I've told you this before. When I was at university, <laughs> yeah. sorry, when I, was at, when I was at school, I was top set for maths, right? And I, I was, by the way, I was the worst kind of student imaginable, as anyone who's listened to an episode of this would guess, right? <laughs> but I, I, was, I was kind of like, I was smart enough to just be able to do the work, and but then I could do it quick enough that then I could just fuck around and I can fucking people. imagine. I, I, I was it, it, so in bad. My, if, I, if I behave badly in this life, I'm going to come back in, in like my hell would be being your maths teacher. <laughs> and like every week ringing your mum and dad and going, he's really not trying. He's, I think he's a capable guy, but he's just not trying very hard. That was every school End report. of the term. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Kind of got an A plus again without even I didn't trying. Get I didn't, no, I wasn't, I wasn't that clever. But I, the thing, I wasn't, like, I wasn't like a proper naughty kid where it's like, fair enough. You, you know, you need help. You've had a tough background. Yeah, yeah. You're just complicated you, childhood. You're, you're, yeah, com- <laughs> complicated. Like, mental what health. What about? And there is mental health. <laughs> no, I, I, I had too much steam blown up my arse. Yes. Right. So then, by the time I was eighteen, I was like, I could be a star. Mm. So then I went to this dog shit university to get a stupid degree and I asked around all the way through that as well yeah. scraped a 2-1 and unfortunately I managed to make a living out of slagging off fucking <laughs> Conor McGregor and talking about Bobby Davro behind his back and it's all going perfectly well but the, the point I'm trying to make is I, I, I think there is a whole generation there's, there's almost a social class I almost want to call it 
the two two class, <laughs> right? Where and it, and it's people who are bang in the middle of being working class or middle yeah, class, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? They they definitely they sort of speak a bit like this. <clears throat> All right, mate. Yeah, sweet. Mm. But they're not from council estates. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, They're not actually working class. Yeah, so they're, right. they're, they're, No one ever struggled in their life, and that, that's also a, bit, a big north south divide. Obviously, in in the south. Working class people love Margaret Thatcher yes. because she's the reason they all own houses. Yeah, right, right. It's not like up north where they close the factories and the mines. Yes. I'm sh- I don't know if your parents are like this. My dad fucking loves Thatcher because he, he managed to buy his council Yeah, house. my parents were the generation... It was their parents that bought the they council They did that, houses. okay, yeah. yeah but, might... but their parents were kind of similar in that like they didn't like some stuff but ultimately they'd always come back to the fact that, oh, we did buy our houses. Yeah, the, the, the point is that that's, that has now created... Those people's kids mm-hmm. grew up in under a kind of new, like the the, the dregs of new labour, yeah, right. where anything's possible. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, things can only get better, <laughs> and it, well, it resulted in a load of idiots like me who grew up too comfortable, <laughs> who had too much smoke blown up their asses, who went to these shit universities yeah. that are just colleges, really, mm. did any old degree, and then got shut out into the kind of um, into the job market. Also, our generation, when we were students. Mm. It was the, um, like, and, and the writer who we referenced on this, Clive Martin, there's a vice writer called yeah, him, yeah, yeah. and it's, he, he was like how a sad generation of lads had to grow up. And yeah. it sums up me and Russ Cook so much. It's like, when we were at uni, it was like the proper, like, uni lad, lad Bible time. generation yeah, right. of, you know, everyone was on Facebook and your Facebook feed was full of, students and lads going to Magaluf doing stupid stuff everyone was really hench at the time yeah. uh, you know everyone was wearing like vests and stuff mm. like that and it was like you won't believe what this lad did next and it's drink a fishbowl vomit everywhere ah, there's no repercussions <laughs> then you get shut out into the job market yeah. there was no job so you know we were, we were into Cameron's austerity yeah just off the back of the financial crash kind and, of and now all of those people who were like idiot lads who who were who just asked their way through school and college <laughs> went and got a shit 2-2 two, two degrees right in nothing a Desmond as it was called at the time right yeah Desmond 2-2 <laughs> right? and, 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 then, and now they're you know loaded up to rivals in debt yeah. there's no work there's nothing like that they're, they're now all paying 850 quid a month for a room yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a house share in London. They're all approaching 30. They're, they can't afford to have kids. They can't afford to get on the housing market. And so what do they do? They run the length of fucking <laughs> Africa just to try and become a YouTuber. And, 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 and that's kind of where I'm trying to go with Russ. Russ, there, there are so many lads like Russ Cook yeah. throughout the UK. The thing that's happened with him is he hasn't just accepted, okay, Uni was a laugh, but didn't do anything for me. I was shit at school, blah, blah, blah. Things you now, just get your head down a bit. Try and earn a bit of money from a decent job. Just got to live with and it. What he's done is he's gone, no. Just because there's no job market, just because yeah. I don't have any discernible talents to make me a star, right. it doesn't matter. I'll be a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's happened for so many lads. So many kind of like, I went to uni, I thought that would do it, that didn't do it. Now there's no jobs for me, there's no houses for me. But it doesn't matter, because I'm going to be a star on YouTube. And... What I'm trying to say is, Russ has courted this fame. For he years. has, yeah. Sorry, I know I've just spoken for about <laughs> nine minutes straight. I could have just been digging the bell the whole way through there. <laughs> but then, but what what we're going to watch next? He's been doing these kind of like, I'll oh, do a challenge on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. For years, none of this happened by accident. And this is a big theme actually of other people. Remember when we spoke? We didn't do an episode about Jordan Peterson, but we talked about how he'd kind of got what he always wanted, and yeah. there were other people that had got what they always wanted. Russ Cook is the same. This is a video from back in the day of him doing the beer marathon challenge. Yeah. Right, who are you? Hardest oh, geezer. What are you doing? We're going to run the beer This is 2019. Which is 26 miles, 26 beers. So that's a beer a mile? One beer per mile, run four laps of the track, stop, chug the beer, do it, repeat, 26 miles. Why are you doing it? Very bad, your health. Funny. 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 <laughs> this is your warm up. Oh, there's a lot of game getting sick and stuff. But how yeah. lad Bible is Russ, this? Russ, Russ. How uni lad is this? It's the fifth image of him getting sick. It's the last one. Right. So he did 26 miles, 26 beers, 
And this is before the kind of, I'm a wholesome self-discipline, I'm going to run Africa. This was his first attempt at going, if I act an arsehole on camera and then run a long distance, hopefully I'll be a star. Hopefully I'll be famous. Now, the question I want to ask you, how old do you think he is in that video? He looks quite old. I don't know if it's the beard, but is he 24, 25? I'm going to agree with you and guess that he's mid-20s. Yeah. And he's asking his mates... I mean, this looks like a fucking A-level drama piece, right? <laughs> yeah, He's yeah, asking yeah. his mates to film him running around a track, drinking beers and vomiting. At that age, my dad owned a house. Yes. <laughs> he owned a car. Yeah. Uh, my granddad would have had four kids by yeah, that age. <laughs> he, he, he'd, he'd proposed to my mum and he was planning a family. And, yeah. I, and I, I, do, I do just think that Russ Cook is like, this is the product of the lost generation. Mm. This is what happens when you over-promise to young people. Yeah. And then the world changes and the boomers don't actually let go of anything. So there's nothing to actually deliver them. Yeah, right. You, you know, Nick Clegg has tricked people like that into going to uni <laughs> and thinking there's going to be no repercussions. A sports science degree, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Right. And, and now he's, he's doing this. this. It's the most desperate and deplorable behaviour you could... Like, this the, beer, the beer marathon was. Yeah, this is a man. Yeah, yeah. This isn't a kid. No, this that's isn't true. Like, like, if you saw a 16-year-old doing that, you'd be like, oh, fucking kids nowadays are all trying to be YouTubers. It's like, it's like 25. And he's got that, like, kind of odd mid spot between like oh yeah I'm a lad but my version of laddiness is it is extreme feats of endurance yeah 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 do you know what I mean it's kind of like the I had a bloke I lived with a bloke at uni and he was like in the army but he was like the army were paying for him to do uni I can't remember exactly how it worked but anyway his whole thing was he could go out and get absolutely fucked beyond all recognition yeah and in the morning he would wake up and eat 16 sausages and run 10 miles like that was his thing <laughs> It's literally like like Lad Bible sent out packs to these guys, being like, "How to be a legend." Yeah, right. <laughs> your your mate is eating fucking sausages and running. Yeah. he's doing that. I had a guy in the room next door to me at uni who his whole thing he could eat two large Domino's pizzas in one sitting, <laughs> and like the every, you know people in the campus would all come and watch. People would film it, and it's like, "Wow, Matt's just stuck down too." He's like, "Yeah, and what?" And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. What are we doing? But the, but and that's that's what you've hit on the really fascinating thing about Russ because he's basically had to position himself as that to get eyeballs right yeah so the first thing that he's doing is this mad lad bible shit he's, he's vomiting everywhere because of the yeah because yeah, yeah. of the beer and the whatever as it's gone on he's become and this is why i think emma has warmed to him and his little gang of dirty friends it's become much calmer and more normal the further they've gone on and that's what's happened to this generation <laughs> and, and, and honestly I, I honestly think that's exactly what's happened yeah. to everyone in their late 20s that I know now. Right. Everyone has done this exact arc. This arc right? of madness. Like, like, arse around at school, get to 18, don't know what to do with yourself. So you go to uni just because everyone tells you to do that. You come out of uni, you don't know what to do with yourself. You then do this exactly as you say, this kind of like, how to be a legend, go crazy, drink at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. And then I honestly think two things happened that hit that generation that turned them into these kind of like semi-woke kind of calm like self-discipline self-discipline yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you've got to look after mental yourself mental health you? yeah. right. <laughs> so it's two things Corbynism and mental health <laughs> honestly I, I think uh, I honestly think that's what hit them I, th- I think gr- <laughs> grime for Corbyn not specifically grime for Corbyn but but suddenly like Corbyn uh, did hit that generation. Yeah. Or you guarantee that this that Russ Cook, uh, your mate at uni, and the guy and my mate who was eating pizzas, eating I guarantee dominoes. every single one of them around 2019 would have done a status being like, Do you know what? Yeah, Jeremy Corbyn could actually save this country if any of you would just give him a chance. And then someone said to them, Do you have mental health? And they went, uh, probably. And now <laughs> Now they're running the length of Africa. <laughs> now they're doing it, but now, but, but but now they're doing things for charity. But he's gone fuck. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is the thing. A- so, any, anyone who anyone who hasn't gone this far uh, yeah. is just doing tough mudders. <laughs> I was going to say it's like they they are doing like like they, he's taken it to the nth degree. Yeah, he's like I wouldn't be surprised if this idea was formed. I I, I don't know this in any way. This is an alleged. If this idea was formed whilst they were on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's, lit- it's it's and it would have literally- started as should we do a tough mudder next year? <laughs> what? What about we could run the entire leg for Europe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, wait a minute. We could do the entire leg for Africa. 
<laughs> you can, I guarantee there was a morning after at some point where he turned to one of his mates involved the camera and be like, we haven't actually said we're going to do it, are we? Who set up oh. the Just Giving page? What did you do that for? What I was going to say was, it's it's either that, it's either him and his mates at four in the morning were like, you should run the entire length of Africa. <laughs> People <laughs> love that. Because <laughs> Corbyn From also Man- said that Africa is struggling. <laughs> right, it's either that or he, <laughs> somehow, he somehow managed to like blag a kind of like junior influencer meeting with like some lad Bible people and he was like listen I've been doing the running I've been doing the vomiting I've been the legend on camera what else do I do and they're like do something charitable Russ and he's like right okay Africa bosh now and and but and this is to go even more kind of <laughs> quasi philosophical with it that is something all of like what you point out that they get karma and they get more kind of like palatable palatable but also like socially aware yeah, and yeah, self-aware yeah. it's yeah. those two things they're suddenly much more aware of the world and mm. the ills of the world and injustice and trying to do something about that and then also they become very introspective of like yeah i do have my moments you know and i can be bad but i'll do my best i'm meditating now right <laughs> <clears throat> that is the product of these people growing up in a, in a society that is still inherently catholic right guilt because it's influenced by guilt mm. shame and sorrow yeah it's because they've been the through this arc mm. of, of in their early to mid twenties doing all this mad shit, trying to be a legend. And now they're like, "Yeah, no, I do feel bad about that. Actually, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Do a status about Corbyn? Run the length of Africa? It, it's literally that. Like, like it's, it's <laughs> honestly. It's, it's, I love how in your mind there are only two versions of like showing guilt or shame. <laughs> One is posting about Jeremy Corbyn and the other is running the entire <laughs> length of Africa. There's nothing in between. But, but it, 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 it's, 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 it's a bigger version of, of, the, of the same act. And it's also <laughs> that, like you said earlier, they kind of, a lot of people, and this is, I was probably just on the, the, the good cusp of this, people that came later had it much harder than me, I think. The promise of this world, go to uni get a degree it will get you a job and yeah. it's like none of that promise for people like russ really came to anything there's no like what's he meant to do he can't buy a house in worthing no, mate. With, <laughs> with a sports science degree as, as someone who did do that exact, <laughs> I, 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 that went, I went to a uni that i am i mean for all i know he went to fucking cambridge he definitely didn't <laughs> but, but like i i think i think I, w- I would have gone for a similar thing to him you are fucked mm. You're looking around going, ah. What are we doing now? Ah, there's, oh God, I'm not qualified to do any of the jobs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's. And most people do just do a tough mudder. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, but this this is it. But he clearly had that thing. He wants to be a star. Yeah, and, and he does. Th- the next one we'll watch, I, th- I think it's him doing some spawn con yeah, or something. Yeah, him doing but, some spawn con. Yeah, but it's worked. <clears throat> he is famous and he has now got brands doing mad stuff like this because. Because Russ is a hot ticket. Yeah, Russ is the main man. My name is Russ Cook, and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. Have we got any? any That's his little trademark, by the way. Emma does a great impression of that. Uh, let me stop. When we saw Russ ran out of energy, we DM'd him for his number. We saw you ran out of caffeine, so we're sending you some of our numbers. That's an actor. Marissa is the founder of Perfect Ted, which is a matcha energy drink. Yeah, and I might just I might just come in and suggest now, Marissa is not. Marissa is an actor. She's, <laughs> she's, she's like screen beautiful. So they're, what they're doing is they're packaging up the Hardest Geezer's favourite meal deal and they're taking it to Luanda. Tesco meal deal. So, so what they're managing to do there, they're managing to get in, hey, did you know you can get our drinks in a Tesco yeah, meal right. deal? Also, because Russ is just a geezer, he's just a normal guy, he's running length of Africa, and what does he want? A Tesco meal deal. And this is, I think, Marissa's partner, Ted, of perfect Ted fame. And he is like the poshest man you've ever seen. After a 32-hour travel day. 32-hour travel day. He's flying to Africa to give Russ his meal. Again, this is early in the, the mission. Russ looks normal. Right, you can grab the hardest geezer meal at Tesco now. Can of perfect Ted, poison duck wrap, Kit Kat chunky. Let's go! Bang, bang! Look how happy he is. This is what he's always wanted. Like, that is some of the most bleak Spawn Con I've ever seen in my life. They're (laughs) hijacking a charity mission (laughs) to advertise the fact that you can buy this poxy energy drink as part of a Tesco meal Mm. deal. They're pretending that a man running the length of Africa for a year wants a hoisin duck wrap. (laughs) I've had a tough morning at work before. I've not wanted a hoisin duck wrap. (laughs) 
He's running the length of Africa. The last thing you want is some dry Tesco wrap that's been on a fucking flight for two days. That's very laddie, isn't it? That's very laddie. Pretend, but it, it's that thing of like, yeah, we, I'm just an ordinary geezer, mate. And it, it, this is why people don't like it. Yeah, that's true. This is uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're circling back to where we started yeah. because we do like him and I do like him. And I like him and I version... recognise so much of myself in him. Yeah, and exactly. Well, that's exactly right. And 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 the the further he's got into this thing, the more he's become a kind of sympathetic and interesting figure yeah. but in order to gain the eyeballs he's had to do mad laddie shit like this and it's really fascinating because the next time he does this this has been big enough this whole thing the next time he does this it will be on netflix he won't be doing this i don't reckon himself anymore because he's, he's i think he's got almost a million followers on instagram now they've raised almost 400 grand like people might be will hate watch it or whatever i can't imagine he's gonna have two dirty boys with him in the van next time i agree with you the production cost costs will go up yes. i agree with you He'll do it again. <laughs> I definitely think he'll go. He oh, might it, start next it, week. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, we we could take bets now. What what, what do you think? Antarctica, yeah, something like Asia. That. Do whatever. Do, do some kind of river run the Amazon yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know if that's possible. Uh, but but oh, this sounds horrendous. <laughs> Four hundred grand is shit. <laughs> it it actually is, it, and it tells you what people think of him. He's so famous. He's like as He's you say, a million yeah. followers. That is a dreadful, like, that's a dreadful result. I <laughs> so, I, I, okay, okay. I listen to a podcast called the Arsenal Vision Podcast. Yes. Right? It's one of the big, and I, I tell you, I listen, I'm on it sometimes. Right. Okay, there might be Arsenal fans who listen to this who've heard me on there. Yeah, I do it sometimes. They do a thing with Arsenal. They partner with Arsenal and they raise money for the Zatari refugee camp, refugee camp in right. Zatari, uh, part of the Arsenal Foundation. They go out there and they, they help. This podcast, yeah. I cannot stress enough, they're not running anywhere. <laughs> They've not been to Africa. One of them went to the refugee camp to have a look and yeah. reported back. All they're doing at the end of each football podcast, and this is a small football podcast, mm-hmm. does not have a million followers. Right. It's not small, but it's, do you know what I mean? <laughs> they raised 500 grand. <laughs> Everyone knows who the hardest geezer is, and no one's giving him money yeah, because true. he annoys them. True. And, and I don't think I don't, like I don't think Netflix will go near him. And, and I, because I think Netflix aren't stupid. They'll do focus groups. Yeah. They'll sit people down and go... Would you watch an hour of this guy? And, you know, you've worn Emma down with it. I mean, God knows how much you fucking made her watch. But initially, I think people do kind of go like, oh, this guy. And, and that bit of Spuncom we've just watched, it is, it's bullshit. Mm. You didn't want a hoist in Douglas. No, no, no. You don't, you, you're not that happy about the fact that you can get a, a meal deal. Also, he's like, get the hardest geezer meal deal at Tesco now. It's like, you've said that as if that's a thing that Tesco are on board yeah, with. Yeah, Tesco are not Tes- on board Tesco have that. got bigger worries, mate. They're trying to kick Eddie Abu out. They're not, they're, but they're, they're, they're not on board with that. You no. can't walk into Tesco and go, can I get the hardest geezer meal deal, please? They'll be like, pardon? What? Yeah. It, this... I feel for the guy because he's a really nice guy. Yes. Right? I think he genuinely is. I think his heart's in the right place. I do think he's doing this for charity. Fair fucks to him. He's not giving up. And I do think he's been abducted a couple of times. I think, yeah, he did, I, think, he did, I, think, I think he did have one thing where there was like, it was pretty There's pretty been gunpoint. There's yeah, been yeah, passports yeah, yeah. go missing. Yeah, he's, right. he's, and he's had to fork out a lot of money yeah. to 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 just stay on the road to, yeah. to to pay bribes to try and genuinely yeah, pay yeah, bribes yeah, yeah, right. to, to, to keep going to live in a fucking van for a year <laughs> yeah but but it's i i genuinely i do think like and and we grabbed that bit of spawn com at random mm. but he's doing a lot for that energy company now and i honestly think like if you'd have showed the first clip to someone uh some kind someone who would have looked down on him some kind of like one of the vice lads or whatever if you'd have gone what do you think is going to happen they'd be like within six months he'll be doing bloody energy drink adverts and it'll yeah. become some <laughs> opportunity for Sponcon and it has yeah like everything on the internet <laughs> that's where it ends yeah, up yeah yeah and it is I don't want to say he's sold out because he hasn't sold out we have we have to point to that, that but no I think it's interesting charity. yeah and, and it's like he's had to it's almost the opposite of selling out where he's had to like in order to sustain this thing in order to pay the editors, in order to buy food, he's had to do anything and everything Sponcon wise. Yeah. Whether it's the the energy drink or, or all sorts of stuff. I think next time it'll be interesting to see where he goes because the next time I think, like you say, maybe it won't be Netflix. But I don't think there'll be that pressure on the next one. Will he be more himself or will he be... Because I think the caricature of the hardest geezer, ferocious ones and twos, here's a perfect energy. That's a function of desperately trying to get enough money to keep going. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe that is just him. But I guess we'll see when he's running I, I think I think what people want is for him to break. 
I, I think that's what people want, and I think that's why people are fed up. I, I think because he's actually going to finish it. Because he's going to finish it, and he's doing all right. <laughs> like, like and, he, and he and he and he has stayed positive. He has. That, that's the thing. He's a real. I mean, that's kind what of his book's going to be. He, he's going to be 100%. talking about positive, and positive I'll tell you mindset. What, he, he will make his money on the after dinner speakers. Hundred percent. Yeah. The, the amount of things being like, um, you know, there'll be fifty fucking recruitment consultants in Worthing in a, in a function room <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a service station, and he'll get wheeled out to be like, when you feel like giving up when you're trying to close a deal I didn't fucking yeah, give up when yeah, I was getting yeah, held yeah. at gunpoint in Rwanda right <laughs> but but he where was I going with that oh no the bells disrupted the bells the bells, the bells slowed me down no he will, positive mental health is going to be his thing positive mental health is his thing and I, and I think what I think if Russ Cook proves anything it's that none of us actually want that <laughs> And deep down, we are we are a a cynical, nasty nation. Yeah. And if you hold your hand up and go, I'm going to run the length of Africa, you better boot, do some fucking vlogs where you're crying down the camera, worried that you're going to get eaten by a lion. Every because otherwise, day, otherwise, we hate you. Every day, Emma is tuning in, hoping to see him get airlifted to hospital with a broken leg. I, I think that's what we want. <laughs> and and I, I honestly think that's what winds people up, because he keeps yeah. smiling. And he stays positive. What a message. And he's, he's not only stayed positive, he's going to do it. He's going to finish. Big up the hardest geezer. Big up the hardest geezer. Do 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 chuck him some money. If anyone's got a bit of spare cash, do chuck him some yeah, money. Yeah, why not? He's done it and and he's uh, like you say, he stayed positive throughout. We hope you stay positive this week. Yes. We'll be back if Mango the Cat is hopefully still alive when we <laughs> leave this room uh next week. Uh see you soon. Chat soon.